this video should answer the question, where does Cloudbeds place a new reservation when it's made? And how does it choose a room for a guest? As well as how we set our things up in the way that uh, we at HostelCat prefer. So first of all, you don't control how Cloudbeds assigns reservations. It only does it one way. Uh, but I thought it might be helpful to explain to you um, how our last software assigned new reservations. So our last software did have a cool feature that I appreciated in some ways and didn't like in other ways. So uh, their way of assigning a new reservation was obviously it looks for the right room type first, but then it looked for the most occupied room of that room type and automatically put the new reservation in there as long as it fit in there. I thought that was pretty intelligent and cool. The only thing it was bad for was when we would have a manager room. So on occasion, we'll have like a staff room where most of the time um, they have a private room to themselves. But on like busy weekends, we put our last like one, two night reservations in the manager rooms. So it becomes a regular dorm room instead of a private for a manager. So the old software, because there was always someone in that room in the system blocking space, would assign new reservations into the manager rooms all the time. And when we had new receptionists, they wouldn't really think about it. They wouldn't move the guest out of the room. So on a random Wednesday when we're not even busy, someone would check into a manager room. Not only does this annoy the actual manager who's supposed to have a private room, but it annoys the guests because manager and any staff room typically have a lot more clutter, especially if the person, the manager wasn't prepared for someone being in their room. Uh, so the guests might have walk, walked into a much messier, chaotic room and not known what beds were actually available. So while I think the old... Uh, systems way of assigning people was kind of smart. It had its disadvantages. So what Cloudbeds does, and by the way, we set up Cloudbeds so it automatically auto assigns new reservation into beds. Like we don't leave that for receptionists or managers to do. We say Cloudbeds just pick a bed for this person and put them in there. And then if we want to move that person, great, we could do that. I like to do this because we just have a visual to see what reservations have actually been made, how long they're for, that sort of thing. So Cloudbeds, the first thing it does when you make a new reservation is it looks for the right room type, of course, and then it looks at the top most rooms. So if I have three female only dorms, uh, like we do right now, the top most room in our calendar is five. After that, it's six. After that, it's seven. So if there's space in bed 5A, it's definitely putting any new reservations in that bed. If 5A is occupied, you know, a couple days later and I make a long reservation, I might get assigned to 5B or 5C or something like that. Whatever topmost bed is available for that length of time, cloud beds will auto assign the new reservation into that space. So it's not looking for necessarily the most occupied room, but often the top most room is the most highly occupied room. So most of the time it does a pretty good job of organizing new reservations. That doesn't mean that occasionally Cloudbeds isn't buggy. Like about two months ago, it started putting new reservations in one of our last rooms. Um, a couple of them actually randomly. I don't know why it preferred a couple of uh, other rooms, but uh, we brought it to the attention of support person and pointed it out. We had to convince them <laughs> that that was actually against uh, all cloud beds policies and, and how they assign beds and then eventually it just got fixed. We also, of course, train our receptionists that if, say, uh, a seven day reservation ends up in a room alone. Obviously, we want to Tetris, is what we call it, meaning move for better fitting of reservations together for maximizing a room. We tell them to Tetris that uh, res long reservation into a full room. Um, and if 
if we have to spill over into a new room, it should just be like a, a one person reservation. So receptionists have a say in what um, room and what bed people get assigned to, of course. So to get to where you can decide which room should be filled first, uh, you go to manage and accommodation types. And within the type you wanna look at, let's look at the 10 bed dorms. We only have two of them. Um, room four, uh, objectively, is the better room. Room 13 is a good room too, but we would much rather fill four first. So we place that up here. If we wanted to switch them, it's easy. You just pull it down and pull it under room 13. Maybe the best example, though, is our six bed dorms. We have a whole lot of them, and they are most certainly not chronological. Um, We've changed the way that we organize them a lot, um, but one common feature is that, so look at, this is room um, two and room one. They are really low on the list. Why? Because they are near our big social area, like our picnic table, and we don't like to get well we like to get as few noise complaints as possible so we like to put people in rooms further down the courtyard so that they're not disturbed you know their sleep isn't disturbed so now room one and two only fill up usually on busy weekends when all the rooms have filled up so it's really low on the list so that a receptionist doesn't accidentally put them in there another way that we organize like Low on the list for a dorm would be a room type where the bunk bed, there is a bunk bed right next to an AC and the AC would be blowing on the dorm booker. So those room types are bad for dorm bookers, but they're okay for private bookers because usually people who book privates only have one or two people. And so they can choose a bed that's not right next to the AC unit. We took put those types of rooms very high on the list of privates, but very low on the list of dorms, just to maximize or minimize our complaints. And of course, our favorite thing is putting manager and staff rooms very, very low, the lowest actually, on the list, so that we only really have to put guests in them on the busiest of busy weekends because generally guests and the staff prefer um, to be kept separate because they just tend to be messier rooms, right? So that's basically our strategy for how we set up the order of how our rooms appear in cloud beds. They are definitely not chronological. And I like it because we get a lot of new receptionists and it subtly communicates with them and kind of forces them um, to Tetris properly and not accidentally leave a guest in a manager room when that's not at all necessary. Of course, you still have to train your staff to Tetris new reservations properly so that they fit nicely together. You don't waste an empty room on one person. You try to fill uh, fill a room before you open a new room, that sort of thing. But that's how Cloud Beds auto assigns new reservations and how we strategize. Don't forget to subscribe and click the notification button if you want to keep receiving more videos and maybe become a Cloud Beds expert one day. And don't forget to press the like button if you're finding these videos useful. Thank you.